Now here's a big pink bundle. What do you think this big pig, pink bundle of spindle cells is? It looks like a huge nerve. Good. Yeah, big pink, uh, pink fascicles of spindle cells. Dr. Rowe, one of my greatest mentors in surgical pathology, taught me there's three things. He always liked to teach three. He said it's either nerve, it's smooth muscle, or it's dense regular connective tissue, which is tendon, fascia, ligament, like we saw earlier with the ramen noodle sign. So nerve, people like to talk about nerve and neural lesions as being wavy. And look, this is a nerve, right? And it is, it is wavy, but look, this is like gently undulating. That's the word I like to use. Look, mm -hmm. it's up and down, big waves, like the wave of the sea. Not like the crinkly ramen noodle stuff we looked at earlier. The other thing, and the, perhaps the best and most helpful thing, is that when you see something that you think might be a nerve, and it's like a normal nerve, not talking about tumors, but, and it's this big, a big massive thing. I'm on 10x subjective here, and this thing takes up, you know, a decent bit of the field. This is probably like uh, five, it's probably like a half a, I guess it's probably about half of a millimeter or more wide. So a pr pretty small, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, but for a, a microscope, it's a pretty good sized nerve, right? Mm -hmm. um, when a nerve's this big, you should be able to see some myelinated axons, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. Little tiny nerves in the dermis, you often don't see any myelin, so it can be harder to tell those apart from other things. Here, usually the myelin's a little prettier. This one's like kind of a little bit uh, bubbly, mm -hmm. but you can see all the little areas there. Usually it's a little bit more crisp than this and not so bubbly, but you can see all the myelin there um, in those nerves. And usually you'll actually see like the little, the little axon in the middle and the vertical incisures of Lantern and Schmidt and all those features uh, that you see in normal nerve. And then you also see nice perineurium around it. See, there's a layer of perineurium wrapping around the nerve. All right, so we've got nerve, and then we've got this little nodule here. So what do you think about this? What is this? It seems to be a big no nodule that's composed of smaller um, nests of um, tissue of nerve origin, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, each one of these, I, I like your, I mean, they're not really nests, but they certainly do look like a little nest, like a little ball with a little space around it, right? But when we look close, each one of those looks like a little tiny nerve, not like the big myelinated nerve we just saw. These look like the little tiny nerves that you find in the dermis. Like you could put any one of these in the dermis and that'd be like a totally normal little intradermal uh, nerve. And you can see in longitudinal section how they kind of run like a nerve, right? And they're kind of gently gently wavy, gently undulating, if you like. And I like that, oh, this is so nice because nerves often do this. Nerves, especially the little ones, I feel, you'll often get that cleft-like space, even in a normal nerve that separates the nerve away from the little perineurial layer around it. And oftentimes it gets a little bit of a blue myxoid or mucin substance. You can see it even here, like look, there's a little tiny bit right there. Mm -hmm. I find that actually really helpful if I'm struggling to identify if a little tiny pink um, structure is a nerve. There's often a little bit of blue mucin or mixoid, whatever name you like. And in, in dermatology trained people like to call the blue stuff mucin and, uh, and uh, soft tissue folks call it, or uh, surge path people call it mixoid. It, hyaluronic acid, right? Glycosaminoglycans, whatever name you like for it. It's the little blue goo, okay? And you, you often find that floating around nerves and in the middle of nerves. And it, when nerves get inflamed and irritated, I feel like you tend to get more of it even. So what we've got is a million little tiny, maybe not a million, but like thousands of tiny little nerves of varying size. And they're all crunched up together here in a big tangled nodule. And what's in the middle of that nodule? A, a really big nerve, and this looks like the nerve we were looking at earlier, right? It's a big nerve bundle, and it's even got a thick layer of perineurium, probably thickened because it's an unhappy nerve. And this nerve is kind of growing out, and then what? It's like it's like a Medusa head, right? It's like got all these little little nerves coming out instead of hair, you know? Um, and that is what, what has happened here, is this nerve has been cut and then tried its best to regrow and reconnect to its neighbor. But this was, I think, probably an uh, amputation stump. Mm -hmm. So there was no neighbor. The neighbor, the other end of the nerve is gone. It's in the surge path lab, right? And this poor nerve tried to regrow and never could find the other end to connect with. And so it tangled itself up into a coiled mess. And that nodule of damaged nerve with tangled little regenerating nerve bundles and sclerotic scar tissue in the background, that's characteristic of 
a traumatic neuroma. Mm -hmm. So this is a great example of what traumatic neuroma should look like. And I feel like the best times you see them is like at, at amputation stumps where they've completely severed a really large nerve. That's the time. You can see it in a lot of different settings where there have been injury or surgery, but I feel like the times where you see it most dramatically is when there's been big, huge nerve cut with a, with a very, you know, significant damage to the nerve, and then the nerve has had no place to regrow. But it's good to recognize because sometimes if you're not thinking of it, you could get this confused, you know, with like a neurofibroma. That could look a little like the shredded carrots of a neurofibroma. And every once in a while, I've seen times where, where there was not a clear history and this started coming up and they, you know, there was a time where I saw one and the person had a supposed history of a plexiform neurofibroma. And then the question was, is this part of the neurofibroma or is this actually a traumatic neuroma? And it took tracking down some history to figure out um, the, whole, the whole story. So in any case, um, occasionally this can be uh, problematic, and um, but this is what they look like. So that's a good example of a traumatic neuroma from a damaged nerve.